What's up, everybody? Quick waiting for next year.com podcast. I was on Dogs on the Run this morning with Andy Baskin, Mike Cairns, and the rest of the gang at WEWS Channel 5. Um, and here is the broadcast. In case you missed it, here's my little portion. Um, brought to you by audible.com, audibletrial.com forward slash WFNY, audibletrial.com forward slash WFNY. Here you go, quickie. Your radio show is Therapy Monday. Yeah. This is now Anesthetic Monday or Anesthesia Monday here <laughs> on Dogs on the Run. We have now coined our Monday phrase. We're there it is. It. <laughs> uh, Rissa, you want to, uh, is that Craig Lindell I see over there? That is Craig Hi, Craig. How are you? Hey, guys. Hey. All right, Craig Lindell waiting for next year. Uh, what's on waiting for next year today? I'm just curious. Oh, man, we have our own profane podcast breaking down uh, what happened yesterday i I think uh we forget anesthesia monday we need anesthesia sunday afternoon then we don't have to have this show no offense i I think i'm already waiting for next year after the week one honestly (sighs) give me your thoughts on the first of all is is that a the entire rock band yeah what's is that just a uh drum set behind you or what is that uh i have guitar amps over there okay and then uh the drum set is over there Look at that, man. Wow. Man. Do you, are you in a band, or what, what's the deal? Used to be in a band. Uh, then the children happened, um, so now I just pretend in my basement. No, I, I, could still, I could still play a little bit. We might get the band back together someday, but I, I'm 36, man. It's a young man's game. <laughs> yeah, you're talking to two guys. Are, Pierre's young, but we're old. Wait, yeah, well, I still think it's good. All right, give us uh, your thoughts on yesterday, and, and let us... Uh, let us in on the wisdom of waiting for next year. All right. Well, I, you know, I've been listening, and you guys are doing a good job breaking it down. I just want to look across the across the field at what the Jets did, coming off a four and twelve season, just to contrast what the Browns did, and then I'll, I'll give you a little a little insight into uh, next week or my version of insight into next week against Tennessee. First of all, the Jets had a four and twelve season, and what did they do? They went out and they signed Darrell Revis. They went out and signed Brandon Marshall. Um, that's the kind of move that you make when you have questions at your quarterback. And obviously the Jets have just as many questions at their quarterback as the Browns do at theirs. You saw the Browns, how they set up their skill positions versus how the Jets went and attacked their offseason. And uh, that is pretty much week one in a nutshell for Browns fans. They got Darrell Reeves too. I mean, um, Antonio Camardi. They got a... Uh... It was the buster screen from us. Eric so. Decker, they had signed yeah. last year. So, I mean, it, it's, he's right. I mean, it, that, and you can't say this about the Browns, Craig. You can't say that we don't have an owner that, does, that won't spend money. You know, it's, so we could say that maybe when it comes to the Indians, you can say that. But when it comes to the Browns, uh, there's no reason, and I, I get exactly where you're going. There's no reason why you can't go out when you identify that wide receiver is one of the positions that you need help at. And don't get any help. At the same at the same time, guys, you look lead wide, league wide, and you saw Jimmy Graham change teams. You saw Lashawn McCoy change teams. How many of these big time players change teams? And I'm not saying the Browns had any uh, any path to any individual guy, but they got none of them. I, the hard part is the Brandon Marshall thing, and I, I know yeah. we're talking about it. He went for a fifth round pick. You going to tell me that he could not have helped the Cleveland Browns? And to what you know, the, you know, as, as negative as you can be on this thing. Brian Hartline looks like one guy that gives everything he possibly has on every play. Yeah, play. You know, and I, I'm not saying that everybody else doesn't, but he appears the way he plays this game. And I, I, I mean, I'm trying to find positives because at one point yesterday, I'm like, okay, I know it was a dog game. It was horrible. What do I have to hang my hat on to say at least we can work on this? And uh, it was, you know, Norm from England said it best. Guys, did you all watch Mike Patton yesterday after the game? He looked like somebody shot his dog. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's like, okay, we had a good first drive, and then, oh boy, that's it. The, the one thing, and you point out the receivers, the back shoulder throw. How many times did Manziel try that? But when you have receivers that are small, five ten, five eleven, I mean, it's not going to work, and that that led to a couple intercept. That led to one intercept. Well, he threw the one ball behind Gary Barnage, and that's a catchable ball. I mean, it, it, no, it was the ball placed had a perfectly? Ball could have caught yesterday too. But they're catchable. Yeah, yeah. those are pro athletes. They're paid a lot of money to make those plays. Make the damn play. That, that's what it comes down to. Make the damn play. You got to make the play. It didn't happen. But, but you can see, see like, like the Jets, Jets have athletes, athletes bigger athletes, athletes, a wide, wide receiver, Decker, Decker and Marshall, Marshall, bigger wide receivers. But we just don't have it. Don't we just have don't it. have that big wide receiver. No. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna make Browns fans feel better though, Andy. Yeah. 
Well, hang on, we'll go back there. Craig, what do we got? Tell me a little bit more about waiting for next year for today. I'm gonna I'm gonna make Browns fans feel better, okay? Because let's let's not pretend like the Tennessee Titans are good. They Marcus Mariota had a good game against a really bad team. And the Cleveland Browns should still come out in their home opener next week and plaster the Tennessee Titans. They should put Marcus Mariota on his back. I'm tired of hearing people say they're scared of Marcus Mariota today because he smashed the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If the Browns think that they've got an elite defense, which they seem to still think they have, um, they shouldn't be afraid of the Tennessee Titans. So I, I'm not going to listen to Browns fans talk to me about the Titans like they're good now because of the first game against Tampa. All right, Craig, hey, thank you so much. We appreciate it. We'll make sure we check you out on waitingfornextyear.com. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, guys. All right, we'll talk thank to you, you soon. Um, uh, Eric, the referee, uh, just I want to make sure we're trying to stay on pace because I know you have some things you want to do in the show. Uh, what, just give me what else we have going on here. We didn't talk about this in our pre-production meeting that we never have. We don't have one. Go yeah, ahead. we actually had more planning than we've ever had for this show. Really? Uh, three minutes compared to uh, zero. Oh, that's good. Three more minutes. What were you going to say about big wide receivers there for a second? I mean, we got to be a receiver on the sideline. Nine, nine million dollars on the sideline that didn't suit up. I mean, I just don't understand. But you let it go. You let it go to her prior, who we could have had out there, who's a big receiver, who's a physical receiver, who played quarterback. That way, Hartline didn't have to be our third quarterback. But right. You know, and it's, how about it's to getting back to a year ago? We had a big receiver by the name of Charles Johnson. Oh yeah, we released him, and now he's the starting wide receiver in Minnesota. Well, things like that happen. I mean, you got to know talent. You got to be able to evaluate talent. If you don't know it like that, then you got to start getting some better scouts. Yeah, I think that's what it comes down to. And I think that's exactly what Andy was trying to point out. They got Brandon Marshall for a fifth round pick. Who does that fall on? Where is the front office when you're looking but for there players like to that? Be, there doesn't seem to be a desire to go out and get that big. And I'm, I'm just fixing our earpieces because yeah. we can't hear anything coming back in. Just to let you know, because there are no rules. I can tell you everything that's going on. Yeah, we can't hear it. Like we can't. Like I can't hear Eric. I can't hear these other guys. And we were tailing off on the end of Craig. So, um, but my point on uh, just on the Browns here that.